All right. Uh, good afternoon, uh, or Niemann Chau, or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's correctly, but anyway, it's a really pleasure to be here talking about uh, uh, data protection, privacy matters, GDPR, and of course, something about Finland. I have the pl pleasure to be the first speaker, so I will start uh, the, this afternoon with very interesting talks. And I will start my presentation about, about, on, on telling a little bit about Finland. I'm not sure uh, what everybody knows about Finland, and do you remember what Finland is? So first, some doing business in Finland. How great country is it? And you should be there. And then some more legal stuff, a little bit more details. What's the legal environment there regarding data protection and privacy? Uh, Finland, as you might know, is a Nordic country with a very transparent and unstable business environment. It's one of the safest countries in the world with only 5.5 million uh, inhabitants, which means we are a small country and it's easy to take care of the business there and, and, and maybe also about uh, data protection that, uh, matters. And, and it's like very cool place to be. <laughs> the, we have very high level of education there. The schools are for free until univer oh, also universities. Uh, as a lawyer, I have to be um, have some disclaimers. So some tuition fees may apply to students non coming out of out of the EU. Finland has an ex excellent ICT network, ICT business in overall. Finland is famous for its ICT innovation, I think, and all, all the other like infrastructure is pretty well handled in, a, in a, such a small country like Finland. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have a pleasure that Finland has attracted, coming to the tech sec sector especially, Finland has act, uh, attracted quite a many of, of, of big investments uh, from Google, from Telecity Group, from Yandex, uh, thanks to its uh, climate and high, highly skilled IT professionals uh, and, and well-functioning infrastructure. Uh, from the Chinese firms, Huawei has just opened a new R&D center in, in the middle of Helsinki and is heavily investing in, in the business there. So they see Finland as a secure place to, to do the R&D uh, work. Chinese investments in overall in Finland ha has, uh, there has been strong growth during the last years. We've been very pleased to have more and more Chinese investors in Finland. We ha have listed a couple of firms here. For example, these are more traditional pulp and paper firms, Kaidi, Kaisel, Hengan International. I don't know if they are familiar names to you, but they have made like over two billion investments in, in, in Finland. Under Sports just bought Amer Sports, which is a very big sport provider with, for example, smart watches, uh, Sunto, and, and then owning some famous brands like Wilson, for example. And then some smaller tech sector buyouts by Chinese companies in Finland. Uh, Zhang Yang Group bought OptoFidelity, which is specialized to, to like uh, AI and found the software will put over right, right where, which is very sophisticated autom automobile software. So just recent examples what's happening between us. And there are of course some Finnish companies doing business in, in China, and you might know some of these companies. So Finnair, our airline, which is one of the major hubs between Europe and China nowadays. So uh, uh, already half of Finnair's turnover comes from 
Asia market. Then we have uh, 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 forest industry groups like Metsa, some new players, Atria, which is a food food uh, company, uh, and then some some little bit maybe more famous firms. Nokia, of course, has always been traditionally strong in in in, in China, not anymore manufacturing itself with mobile phones, but actually HMD is manufacturing mobile phones under the Nokia brand. So Nokia brand is still up and, 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 and running, and it's actually going very well with the Nokia branded phones. And Kone, which are quite a many of the elevators here built by Kone, I think China is Kone's biggest market nowadays. And if, especially if you have kids or you play yourself, you might know Supercell and Clash of Clans. So one of the most popular mobile games in the world. And actually Supercell is nowadays owned by Tencent and, and Tencent bought it from SoftBank over 8 billion euros just a couple of years ago. So huge investments there. Something more about Finland. We are happy that Finland is ranked the most innovative country, thanks to the World Economic Forum. And we have a very, very strong start startup culture nowadays in Finland. A lot of promising tech companies going global and having global business and also, of course, looking for global partners and, and investors. I don't know if anyone have heard about Slush. That is nowadays one of the biggest move startup and tech movements, having events in Helsinki, Tokyo, Singapore, Shanghai this year. And, and Beijing they had a couple of years ago. In Finland, there are over 25,000 attendants in those meetings. That was a little bit background where I come from and what's the business environment and what we have common and what kind of business we have with, with China. Then some, uh, some other, some legal points about the data protection in Finland. The data, of course, the role of data in Finland in, on, or in, and all over the world is getting more and more important. And data is, can be or, or purely, purely non-personalized data, or then, of course, it can be personal data. We talk about uh, big data, and we don't talk about data in overall. But today, we, are, we concentrate more on the, on the personal data. GDPR, which is the main regulation nowadays in the, in the EU, of course, applies as such also in Finland. We have some new uh, regulation there, and of course, a lot of new, new kind of accountability rules. So you have to know more and more better what you are doing, and if you have the EU uh, residents, EU citizens, and uh, people from the EU in your registers, I even if you are in Finland or is in, in China, of course, we all have to know the same rules. <coughs> Finland, traditionally, the data protection environment has been quite good, so we didn't have to do that much special work in, in, in when the GDPR came into force last May, 25th of May, 2018. I just put some major topics about the GDPR here, which applies to all European presentations today. And just to remind what are the key points in the legislation. We have some new terms there, like privacy by design and privacy by default, which might not open when you first look at the regulation. But when you take a little bit closer look, 
there are a lot of like smaller details, what they mean. So how you should create your business and how you should uh, uh, adapt the privacy by default type of approach. And of course, how you can show all the time that you are compliant with the uh, regulation. Lawful, uh, I won't go any deeper in, in the details, but like six main principles. And if you follow these, you are quite, quite, quite in a good, good, good line with, with the regulation. Uh, just few points at least what in Finland has been as, uh, and among my, our clients has been a little bit difficult points which were a bit new to us was for example the, the fifth point which is the uh, storage limitation which means that you have to define actual uh, retention periods for all your personal data. And sometimes, it, of course, sometimes it's very hard to say how long I have the need to, to keep the date. But the main principle now is that uh, in, in Europe, you just can't keep the, day, say, say, keep the data and say that I will keep it forever. You have to have all of the time, the basis to keep the data. And of course, then you, you have to know when to delete it. There are sure a lot of, sorry, my Siri is talking here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, somebody's listening to me. But I won't say anything about that. Uh, but, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, of course, there's a lot of special legislation which says that you must keep some data if as an employer, for example, etc but there are a lot of areas, especially in, in marketing and customer services type of, of data, where you have a lot of difficulties to qualify how long would it be reasonable to keep the data. In GDPR, for example, you can't find any exact years how long you should keep or not to keep data. And that's when, if you are a little bit more familiar with GDPR, you know actually that most of the clauses are pretty generic. So they're generic principles, which then you have to learn how to apply. And we will, of course, get more and more practice and, and case law during the next couple of years. And then all, even it covers the whole EU, all all countries have their special legislation. Like in Finland, we, I just pointed some of those. If you have business, want to come to business, uh, uh, Finland, you should know some of, some of the main rules, of course. All EU countries, they have the GDPR at the top. So that covers everybody. And, and you can find the, all the main rules from GDPR. Uh, and then I put an e-privacy directive there in addition because it's related to GDPR when we talk about I information communication and, and we talk about, for example, uh, data security in, in, in all kind of um, uh, um, devices and we talk about cookies and we talk about uh, direct electronic marketing, then it's the e-privacy uh, directive which applies in addition, of course, to GDPR. It defines the, the GDPR. In Finland, we just re uh, we got a new Data Protection Act in the beginning of, of, of this year. Unfortunately, we were one of the last in the EU, normally we are always the first to adapt all EU rulings and, and following them very carefully. Uh, actually, it, I, I, I will have a couple of words about the, the, the acts, uh, uh, what, the, what they include, but it's, it's nowadays a pretty simple and short act. Then what we have a very special in Finland, we have had already from, I think, 1990, uh, nine, uh, 2001, we have had Act on Protection uh, of Privacy in Working Life. 
Of course, the GDPR covers also the working life, the, the data of employees. But in Finland, we have, it, we have had it a quite a long time, a special law. Not in ev even ev every European country, they have their own law for, for HR data. Then we have uh, the e -private, local e-privacy laws, and of course, other special legislation. If you come to healthcare, if you come to telecoms, etc., there are a lot of there are over 500 different laws in Finland, which include some points of data protection. We crawled all those those through when GDPR came into force, and most of them were were quite good, complied. But the local laws, well, a um, few words, uh, we have in, in the Data Protection Act in Finland, you have some discretions there related, for example, health uh, related data. We have a little bit extra clauses saying that how you can utilize health related data that specifies what's said in, in GDPR. Then all the personal identity numbers, the uh, Processing of, of those is covered by the local law, special uh, regulation on that. And then the processing of, of children's uh, personal data related to information society services, which is like you might know that it has options from 13 to 16 in Europe. And, and, and in Finland, we chose the, the 13 to be the age limit. Has somebody time for me? Five. Thank you. Okay. Okay. After this, okay. <laughs> Sorry, you should have pointed out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what? Uh, you willing to do it now or? Summarize above and uh, and start start from the yeah okay yeah. yeah this is like us more and more and I, I think I this can, is I can start from the very beginning and make a brief summary yeah okay <laughs> because I think I uh, yeah sorry about that okay um, let's go uh, Data Protection Act and <laughs> that's the local one and 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 and. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to make a very brief summary. Okay, now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark Marcus. Um, he, uh, first, he, 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 芬兰是世界上治安最安全的国家 目前芬兰对数据保护越来越重视，那么GDPR呢，对个人数据处理带来了这个新的法规和责任要求。在芬兰，嗯，芬兰的这个数据保护呃，主要的这个体系是呃数据保护法、数据处理和刑事裁呃
if you, in addition to GDPR and Data Protection Act, of course, we have the criminal law also covering some serious breaches of, of the data protection. Uh, it applies mostly to ind individuals, but we have introduced also some, some codes to cover the employers if they do not follow the rights of, of their employees. Then what we, we uh, then I didn't mention this one, but this like really new. We are trying to enact also laws which able to use the data a little bit more vastly, so very carefully covered, so all the individual data, data subject rights, but at the same time trying to promote the innovation. 目前芬兰有一个新的法案正在讨论中这个新的法案目前正在议会讨论中。And that was the special legislation very briefly. Now, I just want to mention that if you have business in the EU, in Finland or in the EU, uh, so you have to, and you are not present there, but you process the data of, of uh, EU, uh, EU persons, you have to have at least what they call EU representative. So you can contact us in privacy rules and, and, and we can, of course, the member firms can help you regarding this. This 情形二是监测数据主体的行为在欧盟内发生。在以下的情形下，不需要设立欧盟代表。嗯，情形一，仅偶尔处理个人数据。情形二，处理不包括大规模数据，呃，大规模处理特别数据的个人、特别处、特别
。芬兰是目前是世界上幸福指数最高的国家，欢迎大家去芬兰开展业务。<笑> And of course, this is the most important. Santa Claus comes from, from Finland, <laughs> but he might have some problems with GDPR because he collects all kind of information about, especially about kids. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs>